rent right now is more expensive than a home payment. What I mean by that is you don't get, uh, homeowners aren't getting any benefit of the appreciation that the tax assessor is showing that we're getting around here. And the home payment um, is, um, is, is not tax deductible. Um, for those that are um, you know, I've had a lot of people, I'm having to deal with the investors right now, their tenants, I'm having to go to the knock on their door, say, hey, you guys, when your lease is up, you're out of here because my investor wants to sell the property. Well, when you own it, you'll never have that situation. Our tax benefits, the, this is a route to a lot of people doing their taxes. Uh, the, the interest on home payments is tax deductible, and most of the home payment is interest and property taxes. And so, what's that? Okay. Um, and renting versus owning, um, leverage really is the key, especially getting into your first property and the buy idea is to buy always, what? Location, 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 right? But even more than that is timing, timing, timing. If you're ready, if the time is right, like we, Wes talked about seasons of life, there's different seasons for buying a home. If you're gonna move in a couple of years, probably not a great time to buy a home. If you're going to be here for a long time, you're establishing a career, wanna build a family, probably a good time to buy a home. But depending on your situation, will depend on how much leverage you wanna use. There's still zero down out there for those that, that are uh, have got good jobs but no cash. Uh, but we, we're uh, you have to consult with somebody who's not trying to sell you a mortgage or a property, but I'm trying to create a lifestyle that's gonna fit and an investment lifestyle it's going to fit for you. Now this is still true. Most of the average American homeowner's net worth is reflected in the equity of their homes. Okay, um, that's, that's, a, that's still a fact today and uh, I'm looking at my father's portfolio. He really doesn't have any, didn't have any investment property by the time he was done, but it would have been five million dollar free and clear right now that he, uh, if he just kept the homes he was living in throughout his life. All right, we're going to go through these 10 steps. Basically, you want to decide and commit. And we've had, uh, Mo can attest, we've had some people that come to our seminar like this and want to go, I'm ready to buy, but I really haven't made a decision. Nah, I'm not, yeah, it might be right. Well, well, maybe, you know, find a good property for me. Oh, well, I don't think I want that, you know. you really got to decide and commit to make, to, to get into real estate. And as Wes would say, you have to have a passion for real estate. Don't buy real estate just because everybody else is doing it. It's not. You need to have a passion for what for what real estate can do for you. Okay. And there's some engineers that call me up and go, I love fixing up properties. I love I love getting my hands dirty. And I'm going, and and I, I know the concepts. And I I don't want to work as an engineer forever. So I want to use my passion of being able to fix properties. I love working in the wood shop. That's not me. You know, I I hire people to change my light bulbs. Okay, but see, my, pa my passion is still real estate. I just have a different, but if you do have a passion for real estate, then you're in the right place. All right, make it a goal and basically never give up. Uh, you know, we're, we're on a plan. We have, uh, my, my wife and I, we've had a certain amount of rental properties. It was very simple figure. Take how many rental properties it's going to take free and clear to live a lifestyle where we didn't have to work. That's called financial freedom. It basically 10 or 11, 12 free and clear rental properties when you subtract out the expenses was going to be enough for me to live a lifestyle without, uh, with enough income coming in after expenses. So it's a pretty simple formula. Build up the assets to enough properties, pay them off over time, and by the time we're ready to, uh, to take it easy, we don't have to, uh, we don't have, so we made a goal, we made a commitment. Now one free and clear house will make retirement easy, but 10 will make it so you won't have to work, okay? Um, Okay, next step two, uh, make a plan. Do self-analysis, like I said, nobody, not everybody uh, should be buying real estate. Assess your motives. Don't do it just because we've been watching um, you know, those fix and flip TV shows, which Mo and I have been talking about how the fix and flipper. But did anybody see my House Hunters show that we were on? Okay, all right, yeah, Benoit did. Um, actually, we were on House Hunters last, uh, to divert a little bit, we were on House Hunters, two different shows in, in um, uh, April, and it was kind of fun. I have a... I have a bootleg copy here for anybody, but we, it was actually, uh, I was a realtor on one and it was actually our, uh, uh, my, my kids and our, our, our journey of purchasing a home last year. So I um, also have it on YouTube, but you can't find it. So if you want to know where it's at, I'll, I'll tell you. Next thing you want to do is make sure that you find a consultant and consultation is the key. And what I mean by is that trusted advisor partner in my realm, I used to own a mortgage company. I used to have people come to me about the mortgages and then go find homes. Uh, it Really, you just want to find that trusted partner that will refer you to the other people that are going to be able to set you up and put you in a good position uh, and that their, their trust relies on uh, their experience with these people and an ongoing trust experience. But consultation is the key because the difference between a salesperson and a consultant is a consultant will ask questions questions and use that information and solve the problem. A salesperson is just going to try to sell you something. 
Okay, sometimes with a consultation we find that maybe it's not the right time to buy. Most salespeople will try to sell you anything they can. They can try to get you something. Um, but sometimes, but consultation is basically asking questions, listening, the, the professional listens, and then helps you make a determination of how to solve the problem. All right? Um, it's also very important to know who your people represent. Not only your realtor, but your lenders, uh, your, your bankers, your, your, your builders, everybody. Make sure you know who they represent. In fact, ask them. Because sometimes you go to buy a house, and you know, a lot of people go about 20 to 30 percent buy, buy a property without their realtor. And they, and they don't realize, or, th or from a builder directly, and they don't realize that there's thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars in incentives they missed out on. And the, and the builder pays the fee anyways. The, 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 the buyer never, uh, the buyer doesn't pay the realtor fee. The realtor, the, the builder does. So don't go buy a house without a realtor because there you might be missing out on experience. The other thing too is whether it's even from a builder or a realtor, I'll guarantee you that the guy that sits the sign in the yard, he has fiduciary responsibility is to get the seller of that house the most money. And by the way, he's not going to tell you there's a house right down around the corner that fits your needs better. Same thing with builders. We even see it with the same builder. You got Morrison Homes or, or D.R. Horton Homes, the sales agent in one area has talked to you, doesn't tell you that there's another house, that actually a community, that fits your needs better because they, they make a living off of selling that product. So have an experienced person that knows the real estate industry working on your side, okay? And make sure that they're experienced in the area Okay, the reason why I've brought Mo Pacnia in as one of my partners is because he's a HUD foreclosure expert. I'm not. I've got 25 years in the industry, but I have a defined area where I'm an expert. Okay, so I've pulled him in and we're partnering on this to be able to cover the area of expertise that I don't have. Okay, and that's that's humbling because I'm giving business away, right? Most salespeople go, I'll handle that HUD foreclosure, I'll handle this, I can handle everything. No, you want somebody, like a doctor. A doctor who's a foot doctor is not gonna, uh, you know, uh, basically he's gonna refer you if a skin problem, you're gonna refer you to a skin doctor, okay? Same thing with, a, uh, with what we're doing here. Most agents represent the seller. Same with builders, most of those on-site agents, um, and specifying your own representative. There's a 12-page, 13-page contract right now to purchase real estate. You don't want to have the seller's agent filling that out. Uh, next thing you want to do is apply for financing. My suggestion is to start right here as a member. Membership has its, uh, membership has its privileges. You know, here at Amplify, they can do things that other people can't. And that's where the, with the whole mortgage crisis that's going on, it's going to be places like Amplify Credit Union and private money lenders and things like that that are actually going to fill the gap and go back to good old fashioned underwriting, which means face to face, let's look at your thing, let's shake a hand over this, let's go ahead and do this. Because the national uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are changing their rules all the time, they're running scared. So actually the good old local banker, the good old local credit union is where it is going to help fill the gap. I'm talking to them right now because I own too many uh, residential properties to qualify for Fannie Mae Freddie Mac financing anymore, but they, they'll, they'll, they don't have those same rules. Okay.